what's up everybody happy tuesday hope all you're having a great day so far um this was an interesting episode today this was pretty interesting um first of all marcus he's starting to piss me off like seriously i understand where he's coming from i feel bad for him but for him to want to i you know i get calling 911 and stuff like that because you know the cops have the resources to try to help find these people you know put out a silver alert for these missing alzheimer's patients i get it but for him to sit there and say i'm gonna press charges on mike for kidnapping i'm like are you serious first of all mike has alzheimer's your wife has alzheimer's they both left that facility willingly before I even finish that, let me say something about this facility. First of all, whoever works at that facility and was supposed to be watching Mike and Yvonne, they should be fired immediately, effective immediately. Second of all, what type of facility is this where Alzheimer's patients can just walk out the door undetected? Why wasn't there a security guard at the door? Or at the very least, why isn't there some type of fire exit or an alarm just in case, you know, somebody exits or enters, you know, some type of beeping or alarm goes off. You know what I'm saying? Like something. How do you have a, a facility for Alzheimer's patients, but anybody can just come in and leave whenever they feel like it? Where's the security? You know what I'm saying? Like that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, Like I said, my great grandmother had Alzheimer's and when they put her in a facility, there was a security guard at the door, you know, to buzz you in, buzz you out. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't just come and go whenever you felt like it. That's just, I understand on these shows you have to suspend disbelief, but seriously, somebody's dropping the ball here. I'm just saying, like, all these people need to be fired immediately, immediately fired. Uh, like, that's not a place I would send my loved one who has Alzheimer's. I'm just saying, y'all are scratched off my list. Uh, <laughs> remind me not to send anybody to that place. Um, but yeah, Marcus is being totally unreasonable. He's being totally ridiculous. Um, these people have Alzheimer's. They don't remember things. Obviously they don't know what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? For, so for you to press kidnapping chart, are you serious? Like he's being totally ridiculous. I feel bad for him at the same time because his wife doesn't know him anymore. Remember him and you know, this is a woman that he spent 30 years with. I feel bad. But at the same time, you need to have a bit more compassion. He doesn't have, he lacks bedside manner. He lacks compassion. It's like, you're not human. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is wrong with you? Like I said yesterday, he doesn't want to face reality. That's what it is. He's, he's in total denial of how bad his wife's memory is getting. And he thinks that at some point she, he may think that, oh, she's going to get better one day. No, she's not. That's how Alzheimer's work. They never get better. Sadly to say, they don't. You know, I wish that there was a cure for Alzheimer's. God knows I do wish that there was a cure. For right now, there's not. So, you know, he needs to snap out of that denial, check back into reality, and, you know, become more compassionate. Not only for his wife's situation, but for Mike's situation. Mike is not knowingly trying to steal your wife. You know, he keeps forgetting that she's married, obviously. She forgets that she's married. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, come on. I understand it's hard for him, but you're doing too much now. You're doing way too much. And you got some cojones to sit there and try to tell the mob boss, the Don of Port Charles, that you're going to have his father arrested to his face. That takes a lot of moxie. I'm going to tell you that right now because anybody else would have been scared. Now, let this have been back in the day in real life and you tell John Gotti or Luci Luciano or whoever that you're going to put their dad or somebody in prison. Bruh, you would have came up missing real quick. I'm just saying, had this been back in the day, you would have you would have went missing. I'm just saying, you got some cojones. Um, you 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 must got giant grapefruits. I'm gonna tell you right now to sit there and tell Sonny Corinthos to his face that you're gonna put his father in prison. Uh, that, that was bold of you, Marcus. I commend you. You got more guts than you got brains. Uh, that's fine. You know, you got some moxie. Okay, might want to dial it back though. I'm just saying, you don't want to mess with him. Um, especially when he got his robot hitman at his side. Speaking of robot hitmen, why every time something happens, Sonny or Carly have to call Jason? Why? You can't handle this situation without calling Jason? Are you serious? And when Jason got to the facility, Sonny telling him, oh, get our people on it. 
You called him all the way to, well, Carly, I, I believe, technically called him, but still, you know Sonny would have anyway. So you mean to tell me y'all called this man all the way to this facility just to tell him something that Sonny could have did on his own? You called him there to tell him to get our people on it to search for Mike. Sonny, you have a cell phone, correct? I'm sure your many bodyguards have cell phones. You can call either one of them on the phone. Just click, 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 dial seven digits. This Max, this is Sonny. I need you to get all of our available people. Get them on the lookout for Mike and Yvonne. Yada, yada, yada. Let me know ASAP. Click. That's all you had to do. You didn't have to call Jason to come there to tell him something you could have did on your own. I'm just saying. <laughs> Jason would never have a life of his <laughs> own. Poor Jason. You would never have a life of your own, bro. I'm just saying. Actually, I can't even say poor Jason because Jason does this to himself as well. So I can't even feel bad for Jason, honestly, because Jason refuses to leave that life. So who cares? Anyway, moving on from that mess. Um, Sam, you know, this reminds me. So I feel like Sam is in danger. I do. I feel like she's in danger. Something bad is going to happen. I have that feeling because whoever I, Daisy is a part of this, I'm sure. That's clear. Um, no wonder she's cozying up to Christina and stuff like that. It, it's no coincidence that you cozy up to Sam's sister and you work at the same facility where Yvonne is a patient and she has a magazine or a newspaper in her name and sent the clipping, the obituary to Sam. You know what I'm saying? It, there's no coincidence there. You, you're doing all this on purpose. All we need to know is the why. Why are you doing this? Like, what's your purpose? You want money? I, I think if it was about money, I believe she would have been asked for that, though. I don't know. She playing some type of cat and mouse game. Jason's whole, um, you know, his deal about this is if you don't play, they can't win. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't play the game, basically. Don't feed into it. I feel like if Sam ignores this, it could get worse. Like whoever's doing this, Daisy, whatever her motives are, it's going to get worse. I'm surprised I'm even remembering this girl name. Usually I call her Asian Persuasion because I can't remember her name, but I'm surprised I remember. She must become, you know, she must be becoming prominent on this show, I guess, because for me to remember your name, that's 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 a lot, <laughs> especially for a day player. I'm just saying if I remember your name, you should feel, you know, special because I don't usually remember a lot of characters names that are not on contract. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> so anyway, you know, like that movie Ghost with Whoopi Goldberg and Patrick Swayze, Demi Moore. And when Whoopi Goldberg was playing the psychic and she told Molly, she was like, you know, Demi Moore's character. She was like, Molly, you in danger, girl. Sam, you're in danger. I'm just saying you're in danger. You might want to hire some guards. I'm just saying because this girl seemed like a little freak. You know, she rubbing people temples and you know, she, Daisy strikes me as the type of girl that got a pentagram or something in her house, like on the floor and stuff. What they call it, a pentagram or whatever, where you could like, you know, worship the devil and whatnot. That's how she strikes me. Like she seems that demented. Like you see it in the eyes. Eyes don't lie. You know how some people say somebody is soft on the eyes or easy on the eyes? Well, she's crazy in the eyes. I'm just saying. Um. So anyway, moving on from that mess. Christina and Valerie. Lord, 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 Lord. I knew that kiss was going to happen. I knew it. I, I was hoping Valerie and Christina would get together at some point. Honestly, Valerie's reaction to the kiss didn't really surprise me none. But she was like, oh, I'm not gay or whatever like that. Just because you kiss the same sex does not technically mean you're gay. It could either mean you're bisexual, which Christina admits that she is, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Two, you're experimenting. You know what I'm saying? People experiment. People are bisexual. People are just flat out gay. Whatever. It's 2018. Like, I, you know, I support it. You know, the LGBTQ community. You know, cool. Um, I was hoping for this, though. I feel like with Valerie, she might be confused, maybe. You know, maybe deep down she really does like Christina, but she probably don't want to admit that she's, like, into guys and girls or, you know what I'm saying? Like, the... You know, I wouldn't say that she's a lesbo or nothing like that, but clearly she's probably like she could be bi. She just don't want to say it or maybe she's never been with a woman before. 
and she's, you know, don't know how to act towards it. But her response was, you know, not out of the ordinary. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't really shocking. I feel bad for Christina because Christina felt like, you know, she read too much into it or whatever. I feel like Christina, you know, when it comes to relationships, I feel like Christina, after what happened with her and Kiefer, you know, he beat on her and stuff like that. I think she's like socially awkward when it comes to relationships a little bit. Like she reads into things like say if Valerie were to touch her shoulder in a playful way for Christina, she might take it as a sexual way. You know what I'm saying? That's just how she sees things. There's nothing wrong with that, but at the same time, you know, you get these impulses because it's obvious that she's been feeling Valerie. That's why I think she wanted to act on that kiss because she's been feeling her. Like, you can tell by the way she's been looking at her every time they come around each other. It's all in the face. Like, when you look at somebody a certain way, you give them them bedroom eyes. That's how Christina be looking at Valerie. Like, straight infatuation. You know, bedroom eyes. You know, like, she just be feeling her. And there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, you just got to make sure the other person is on the same page, too. Or before you kiss them, you have to, like, sit them down and talk to them and see how they're feeling about you. You know, put all your cards on the table, basically. Because I feel like when you're friends with somebody or whatever and you feel romantic feelings for them, sexual feelings, like, you should sit there and, you know, put the cards on the table and just let them know what it is. Instead of acting on that impulse. Because you don't know how they're going to react. You know what I mean? Like, you really don't. So, for me, I felt like Christina should have had that conversation with Valerie first. But I'm not mad at the kiss, though. It was hot to me. I'm just saying. Um. So, anyway, moving on from that. I feel bad for Liz because she doesn't know what to do with Aiden and stuff like that, how to help him. You know, she feels helpless. I feel bad for her, though. I wish she would have let um, Franco tell her about the pot. <laughs> but before <laughs> before Franco could even tell her about the pot, Cameron and the little shady boy, the little drug dealer, got caught by Valerie, of all people. <laughs> Cameron is dense. Like, you can tell Cameron ain't never... You can tell Cameron has no street smarts. He's not from the hood. He's never done anything like this before, you could tell, because he don't know nothing about hood etiquette. Um, let me tell you something about hood etiquette. When you text or call a drug dealer about some drugs, weed, whatever you're buying, um, you cannot, once you call or text them about buying something from them, you cannot text or call them back and tell them the deal is off. That's not how that works in that world. That's why I call it hood etiquette. Because once you do it, you have to purchase it. Whether if even if you don't want it no more, you still got to pay them because they expect their money. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't just close that door once you open it. You know what I'm saying? The only way to close that door is by paying them. That's literally the only way to get them off your back. I'm just saying. So apparently this boy, once he got arrested, sitting there threatening everybody, told my oh, I'm going to get my dad on you. Who the hell is your dad? Like, please tell me we ain't about to get his pops on the show. I'm just saying, like, hopefully he's just a day person. Cameron, you are in a world of trouble, son. You are in some trouble. First of all, Liz need to whoop his ass. I understand he was trying to be, you know, buy the pot for Oscar or whatever. Cool, I get it. But at the same time, you knew better. And you need to ass whooping, I'm just saying. Um... I don't think Cam is going to get serious, like, legal trouble for this because buying marijuana, especially when you have no priors and stuff like that, chances are you're probably going to get a slap on the wrist or some type of community service or something like that, you know, suspended sentence, whatever they you give juveniles these days or whatever. But, you know, you ain't going to go to jail for it. I doubt it. Um, I'm not mad at Lulu for coming by the police station trying to get information on the murder investigation. That's her job. As an investigative journalist, it's her job. Chase was stupid for leaving that file on his desk, though. I'm not even going to front. Like, Chase was so stupid leaving that file on his desk. And Lulu took a picture of the file. I said, PCPD, get it together. <laughs> get it together, PCPD, because y'all fucking up. I'm just saying, you're fucking up big time. You have a, a journalist, a reporter in your department. 
trying to get information on a murder investigation and you leave the file on your desk think think why didn't you take the file why didn't you put it away <laughs> put it in a locked drawer or something like why I understand he was busy with Cameron and eating his chicken parm <laughs> yo he fell for chicken parmesan shit I would have too because that chicken parm be looking good I'm gonna tell you that right now chicken parmesan is the best blazing so I couldn't turn that down but you still got to be smart. I'm just saying. Um, so anyway, Margo done found Mike and Yvonne, I guess. I said, oh, Lord. So, you know, once Margo find them and she done called Sonny and told him, well, I found your father, yada, yada, yada. You already know this is going to piss Carly off. Because judging by the previews, Carly has had enough. Like, she's not with this bullshit no more. So anyway, that was pretty much the episode. If I forgot something, let me know. But I'll see you all later. Have a great day. Peace.